This is an introduction video to my series of how to paint flames of war figures uh, videos. Now this is uh, a series that's going to be concentrating on the figures themselves and not tanks. Now um, I wanted to do an introduction because the, uh, the, the videos themselves, the tutorials are just straight into uh, the painting. So I'd want to maybe talk about why I do things a bit more in this video. Um, and talk about the techniques. Now, um, first of all, I use a, what you would call a high contrast technique. It's layering, and as you can see here, it allows the, um, the shape of the figure to be seen from some distance. Now, in a lot of the cases, um, when people are doing layering, they will use three colours. They'll use a shade colour, and then a main colour, and a highlight. So for instance, here are a couple of my usual suspects from a German field grey. But I only use two colours over a undercoat of German camel black brown. And you can see it looks really quite black. But it is not black. Uh, black is a little bit too strong for most colours. So that's my intention. I'm going to start off um, with a dark undercoat. In nearly every case, there are exceptions to all rules, and I'll explain that if I come across any. But in nearly every case, will be two um, two colours on top, and that'll allow you to get nicely detailed well contrasted figures where you can easily see the shape and uh, the colours. So, stuff you won't see in my how to guide is preparation. It's nice and simple. I use the standard kind of tools that you would use. Hobby knife, clippers, files and then when the prep's done Using a bit of blue tack, I stick them onto a small base. Now I've tried sticking them onto things like screws or nails or things like that, but I, I don't like that. Uh, I find that this, I'll just try and pick it up one handed, this is a very steady way of holding it to my mind. I can manoeuvre it around as I want, keep control of it, and it's a quite a relaxed way, whereas pinching a nail or such like, when you're painting for a long time in a day, it's not not such a relaxed um, feeling. Now, I normally would square off the figure straight across the base, you know, along its axis, so to speak. So once that's done, I get the undercoat on. As I said, German Camel, black brown. Now, my paints of choice for my figures is Vallejo. Though, to be honest, there are so many similar paints out there, they'll all do the job. These are, when it comes to picking a, a highlight and a main colour, they're, they're, no, they're not set up with any obvious partners that you can choose. You simply have to learn through experience what gives you the right kind of contrast. Um, and that means you get some fairly unlikely partners, as you'll see when... Uh, we actually get into the, the painting itself. Okay, so when I'm painting, I would typically line up the figure in my hand in a way that will allow me to approach the area I want to paint at the best angle. I can't always do that when I am uh, recording the video. Uh, I have to come in um, at some fairly um, wonky angles so there are going to be some uh, some lines that aren't as sharp as they could be, some mistakes. Uh, just take that into account when you're painting. Make sure that you're approaching a, a line where, for instance, if you want to paint something top to bottom, you're square on top to bottom. If you want to get it to the side, you'll anger, angle your base so that you can get the right uh, sign, the right side, sorry, uh, and get the, the paint on. 
in the vast majority of cases, I'll be looking to get that on in one stroke as well. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit soft, uh, as long as it's on in one stroke. If you're using a really light colour, you'll have to use two strokes and you'll see that. Now, there will be the odd glitch, as I said, there'll be things painted in the wrong way. Um, well, not the best way, sorry, there might be mistakes and there'll also be things going in and out of shot. Uh, I, I devised this thing here. Um, I, that's my target. You'll see it appear in most of the videos and I keep the figure as much as possible within my line of sight, within this. So if you imagine it, I'll be holding it. Let's see, it's, it's very, as you'll see, you're closer to the figure, so I know, oh, that's too high. I've got to bring him back in so his head's under that, that edge there. Uh, but I will still go out of focus, folks. I will still go out of shots. So on occasion, I'll block things with my fingers. So um, uh, apologies for that. Uh, and you know, that, that I'm painting in a domestic setting, so you might hear things in the background, people at the toilet, who knows what. Um, just ignore that and concentrate on the painting. So, uh, I use a ceramic palette uh, to prepare my paint. I clean it on a regular basis. It's nice and tough and uh, it's quite easy to work with. So I, if I need to shape my brush, for instance, or have a little bit of water uh, beside the paint, if I'm doing some kind of blending, though typically I'll do blending more on vehicles than on uh, the infantry. Uh, so that's very handy, that's very good. Um, much better than, I find that a sort of sacrificial kind of palette that you would just throw away. This brush here is a Wargamer Insane Detail from Army Painter. Oh, I'll turn that around so you can actually read that. That's the right kind of size for my small detail. If you put it beside a figure, you can hopefully see that's going to get me the small lines that I want. And then any other larger brush that will allow a good coverage, for instance, this one here, and it could be a little bit bigger as well, as long as it's got a good point. Now, these brushes are still really quite small, but what you're painting is really quite small. And then if there's any big leg work, uh, for instance, putting the the, the shade colour on um, as a base coat, I just use an old wrecked brush. I can use a, a smaller brush if I need to get in to any fine details. But no science there. Not going to use a good brush to do the hard, heavy lifting, so to speak. And then as far as lighting goes, folks, I have one light here which faces the figure. Now that means, for instance, if you had light just coming from on top, there's shade. You have to move it around here. It's got light coming from the front and I use a softer bulb in the light and it's uh, got an angle as well. So I can direct it towards the figure and then I have other lights to give general lighting from above. This is uh, Scotland by the way folks, so um, we don't have a lot of good light. So I have to rely on my lights most, mostly every single day. Even when there is good light in Scotland, there's a hell of a lot of time that it's coming in at a pretty low angle, so it actually blinds you and you end up having to close curtains. So getting the lighting right is good and the desk is really cluttered just now folks but I don't normally paint like this. I would want my background to look more like that so when I am viewing a figure the background is nice and clear. I find that my focus is confused if I'm trying to paint a figure and you've got lots of other things in the background. That'll happen as well even with a camera. Um, It'll try and focus on what's behind the, the item and your eyes can do that as well. So I like to keep a clear um, a clear desk behind where I'll be holding the figure, you know, behind what is my line of sight. Now, the, when you see me painting these guys, as I said, it's really close up. So the, um, the result might appear quite harsh, especially as it's going to be under quite a strong light um, but I'll be putting pl plenty of examples of completed figures and you know photographs for instance in, in decent lighting 
so you can see what they're actually like and, and if you think oh my goodness that shade is enormous what's he leaving that in, in there for it's actually only going to be about a millimetre in width uh, so it's it's no more than would be there if you chose to apply a wash um, I don't I don't do washes and dry brushing and such like because I can't get the same level of contrast as is possible when you use this um, this two-step, really two-step layering technique. Not everybody enjoys painting figures. Uh, you, you'll see the videos tend to be about 35 to 45 minutes long because it's blow by blow. Every single brush stroke is going to be shown. I normally production line the painting up my figures. You can see these guys here are ready for uh, a highlight. They're going to be getting this highlight colour. Over here I've got, I have a lot of gun crew for somebody who doesn't want to paint the crew on all the lovely vehicles and guns that he's got. So I'm painting them for a friend just now. Now to the standard that you see me painting in the videos, I can normally do 25 to 30 like that on a Saturday, let's say, and uh, not put my neck under too much strain. Uh, you've got to watch your neck um, when you're painting, I find. I've previously been a full-time professional painter and actually like making a living out of it, so to speak. Painting six, seven, sometimes eight hours a day, six or seven days a week. And that can um, create a strain on you. So be mindful of how you're holding your head. If you find your head's dropping down, um, maybe there's something wrong with your lighting, get your lighting right so that your head can be in a relaxed position. If you need to put anything down the way, just make your eyes a little bit down and watch your shoulder or whatever arm you paint with. You may find it wants to hunch, you know, uh, pull up towards the neck. That's going to shorten the tendons in your neck and you'll start to get... Um, uh, start to get pains there and I'm saying this out of experience uh, so it's something that uh, you should bear in mind if you're going to be doing this for a, a long time and I use this by the way folks on my neck it's memory foam so it's nice and hard it doesn't support my neck directly but what it does is make sure I keep my head in a neutral position uh, and that's like one of the, ex the extreme sort of measures I've had to take to keep myself painting over um, a great, great many years. I mean, you're talking very, very heavy painting for seven years or more. Um, so that can take a strain on the body, but more importantly, perhaps, uh, it allows me to develop this little style of painting and create some very nice figures and I'm, I'm hoping this will be of interest to you guys in terms of approach and colours. Um, you know, and as I say to a lot of people, you're only going to paint it once, so why not paint it as well as you can? So, have a look at the videos. There'll be links in the videos to other completed work that relates to that um, type of figure. And if you've got any questions, uh, just uh, drop a note in this in the intro or in the video itself and I'll look to answer everything that's uh, posted guys and um, you know play, like uh, please like the uh, video subscribe to the channel and that will encourage me to do more of these kind of tutorials over time the big one being one day showing airbrushing as well as the finishing of tanks and vehicles. So, get yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, coffee, a beer, whatever it is, and sit back and hopefully enjoy the how-to series.